So in this video, we are going to discuss another interesting reaction called the Hinsberg reaction or the Hinsberg test. The Hinsberg test is another classic chemical test that is used to distinguish between primary, secondary and tertiary amines. And this is based on the reaction with Hinsberg reagent, which is benzene sulfonyl chloride. Okay, so this reagent is commonly called Hinsberg reagent. And the product formed in this reaction is called a sulfonamide. Now, what is the differentiation feature here? We know that in carbylamine reaction, the distinguishing feature is the formation of isocyanates. Now, isocyanates have a very distinct foul and pungent smell. So, the differentiating factor was the evolution of such a pungent smell. In the test with nitrous acid, we saw the main distinguishing factor was the evolution of nitrogen gas, the effervescence, right? The bubbling of nitrogen gas. Now, what is the distinguishing feature in this reaction? It is basically the solubility. Yes, the solubility of the sulfonamides that is formed in this reaction. You see, this particular reaction exploits the difference in the structural properties of the amines. Primary amines have two hydrogen atoms attached to the nitrogen atom. Secondary amines have one hydrogen atom and tertiary amines have no hydrogen atoms attached to the nitrogen atom here, right? And each of these amines react with the Hinsberg reagent to give products that have distinct or different solubility characteristics, okay? So let's explore what is happening in this reaction now. So let's look at the first reaction, which is the reaction of a Hinsberg reagent with a primary amine, okay? You see, when primary amines react with benzene sulfonyl chloride, there's a nucleophilic attack that's happening. The lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen atom attacks a sulfur atom of our benzene sulfonyl chloride because sulfur here is electron deficient. And this is due to the presence of strongly electron withdrawing oxygen atoms as well as the chlorine atom here. And because of this, sulfur here gets a partial positive charge. So once a nucleophilic attack takes place, we have this intermediate that is formed and here the double bond gets restored and with the elimination of the chloride ion, we get this. And in an alkaline medium, a deprotonation step happens giving us this final sulfonamide product, which is an N-alkyl benzene sulfonamide. Now, if you look at this product carefully, you will see that there's a highly acidic hydrogen atom that is attached to a nitrogen atom here. And this hydrogen is strongly acidic because it is not just attached to an electronegative nitrogen atom, but because of the presence of a strong electron withdrawing sulfonyl group. So what does this mean? So what's the consequence of this? It simply means that because we have a highly acidic hydrogen here, it can react with an alkali solution and form a soluble salt. And that's exactly what happens here. So basically, the initially formed sulfonamide is insoluble in water and forms a solid precipitate. But when we add excess alkali solution, it gets deprotonated. This hydrogen, this highly acidic hydrogen gets deprotonated by the base and forms a water soluble salt as you can see here. You see, this anion that is formed after deprotonation, as you can see here, is highly stable. It has multiple resonance forms and is stabilized by resonance. And this solubility of the product here is the key distinguishing feature of a primary amine. So what do you think happens with secondary amine and tertiary amine? So it definitely has something to do with the presence or the absence of this acidic hydrogen in the product. So let's look at the reaction with secondary amine now. A secondary amine reacts with benzene sulfonyl chloride to form NN dialkyl benzene sulfonamide. And here again, it follows a similar nucleophilic attack. The nitrogen atom attacks the sulfur atom here of the benzene sulfonyl chloride. The SO double bond gets restored here and the chloride ion gets eliminated. And since the reaction is being carried out in an alkaline medium, it takes up this proton and gives us a final neutral sulfonamide product. And this product, as you can see, will be insoluble in water. Why is that? Because can you see any acidic NH bond here? Can you see any acidic proton that is attached to the nitrogen atom here? No, right. And if there's no proton, no matter how much excess alkali that you add, there's nothing to get deprotonated, right? So because we don't have an acidic NH bond here or an acidic proton at this place, it does not react with alkali and as a result, we don't get a soluble salt. 
So basically what I'm trying to say here is that the reaction which secondary amines will give us a sulfonamide that is insoluble in water and that is the characteristic difference between these two reactions. Primary amines give us a soluble salt and secondary amines will give us an insoluble sulfonamide. And this insolubility differentiates the secondary amines from the primary amines. Now what about tertiary amines? Primary amines give soluble salt, secondary amines give insoluble sulfonamides. What about tertiary amines? How are we going to differentiate that? Well, turns out that tertiary amines do not undergo this reaction at all. You see, when we react a tertiary amine with benzene sulfonyl chloride, because it does not have a hydrogen atom here, there is no NH bond here, these reactions do not produce a sulfonamide product at all, like how we get in the case of primary or secondary amines. And since there is no reaction that is happening here, we don't have to worry about the solubility characteristics of the product that is formed. So what would be the visual cue here? So the visual cue in this case would be that there would be no solid precipitate formed and the solution remains clear throughout. So to summarize, we can see that primary amines react with Hinsberg reagent to form soluble salts. But remember there is a small caveat here. It first forms an insoluble sulfonamide which then reacts with excess of alkali solution to form a soluble salt. Now in the reaction of secondary amines with Hinsberg reagent, we get an insoluble sulfonamide. The sulfonamide that is formed in this reaction does not have an acidic hydrogen. It does not have a hydrogen atom attached to nitrogen atom and as a result it cannot react with excess alkali and produce a soluble salt. So because there is no such hydrogen atom here or no such bond here, the reaction would stop at this, at the formation of this insoluble sulfonamide. And the tertiary amines do not react with Hinsberg reagent, it remains unreacted and has a clear solution throughout. So as you can see these differences in the solubility of the products arise because of the structure of these amines and whether the amines have hydrogen atoms attached to the nitrogen atom in them. So as you can see this Hinsberg test provides a quick and a reliable method to identify the type of amines in a particular sample. But the reaction also comes with certain limitations. For instance, if we use highly bulky amines, then it might react very slowly with the Hinsberg reagent or in many cases not at all. And sometimes we might end up with sulfonamides that may not have such clear distinct solubility differences. So again, you don't need to worry about all of that for now. But on theory, this is a great method to differentiate the different types of amines. So in the next video, let's solve a couple of questions on differentiating these amines using all of these reactions that we have studied now. The Hinsberg reaction, the reaction of amines with nitrous acid and carbyl amine reaction. Okay. So see you all in the next video.